Hey, Chris, uh, I know you've already got a couple games under your belt this season, but how weird does it feel knowing that it's going to be over a week into December and you'll be playing your in your first home game at the Yum Center the regular season? Yeah, I haven't really thought about that too much, Matt. Um, you know, I was there for the two exhibition games, uh, just trying to improve our team every single day in practice. And so I, I haven't really taken any time to think about uh, it being my first game. I think more about, uh, you know, our team uh, being ready against DePaul than anything. Brett. Hey, Chris, what uh, what kind of challenge are they, um, you know, defensively, particularly with, with Freeman and, and what he's able to do? Yeah, they're a challenge. I mean, they um, they play fast. Uh, they've got some some talented players. I think they're playing well together. Uh, they are, they run their offense in a way that spaces the floor pretty well. They run some good actions and have some counters for that. Obviously, uh, Javon is a guy that uh, can take over games. You know, they they've been in some tight games with, you know six, eight minutes left in the game, and he virtually scores almost every point down the stretch uh, without being selfish. He just gets it going. So he's a big challenge. He's not the only one. Uh, we recognize that uh, they have several guys that can get to their spots, can score at a high level, and, and I like the way they're playing. And then when the shot goes up, they're one of the better offensive rebounding teams that we've played. So that's another challenge in and of itself. Michael. Hey, Chris, um, when you have an extended period of time like this to prepare for an opponent, um, does it give you extra time, to, I guess, to look inwards? And, and if so, what's kind of been that focus for the team as a group this week? Yeah, obviously, when you have more time between games, uh, you don't spend every single second on the opponent. Uh, so, you know, we really took a look uh, at the NC State game, some areas that, that we want to improve and, and, again, uh, improve from the Michigan State game and just, you know, the continual improvement. I thought uh, we did some really good things uh, on the offensive end in the first half. I think uh, turnovers, especially early in the second half, allowed NC State. And I don't want to say to get back in the game because, uh, you know, there's two teams out there that are competing. And it's not just because, you know, we didn't do our job. They did a, a really good job. And they, they increased their pressure. We turned the ball over. We gave them some transition looks, and it became a much closer game. So... Uh, again, turnovers is something that we've been trying to address, uh, you know, literally since we've been playing games because it's hurt us in several games. But I thought we made uh, a few strides against a pressure type team against NC State. That's what we're going to have to do against DePaul. You know, execution in, in some late game things that, um, you know, may not have caught the, uh, the average fans eye but some things that we have to do better in the last uh, minute or so uh, but yeah we've we've looked inward uh, certainly uh, with great respect for DePaul and that's that's who we start preparing for today go to Brett and then Kent Spencer uh, Chris obviously there's been some foul trouble there's been some different factors but but when you look at what Sam's been doing the last few games obviously not 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 getting in any kind of rhythm some of that is minutes but but uh, what is he doing both in terms of the fouling and, and then offensively, uh, what are you seeing from him when you look at it? Yeah, I mean, I had a talk with Sam the other day. He just has to play better. I know that's pretty generic, but that's what he has to do. I think that he has to be aggressive uh, when those opportunities are there. And when they're not, be less aggressive and, and move the ball and, you know, really get lost uh, in transition, you know, get lost getting to the offensive glass. That's where I think he's made, you know, his mark when he's been a really good player for us. So we haven't lost faith in Sam, but he does have to play better for us to be a complete team. And, uh, you know, he had a really good practice yesterday. So hoping that uh, remains the same here these next couple of days as we head into DePaul. Kent. Yeah, they have to get themselves involved. You know, they have to give the the the, um, the staff confidence uh, in the way that they practice. That leads to trust, us trusting them in game situations. I think uh, you can see at the end of the game who's on the floor at times, and that's uh, who's really earned it. 
uh, in my opinion. But, you know, we have to make sure that uh, we remain a deep team because of the way that we want to play on both ends of the floor. Um, and in order for us to do that, we have, some, we have to have some consistency uh, out of really everybody. You got to know what to expect when you put them in. And so uh, we're not there yet. You know, we're not there yet, but that's, that's why you practice. We're not a finished product by any means. Uh, you know, I like our team and I think our intentions are where they need to be. Uh, we do have to shore up execution on both ends of the floor and need some consistency uh, from our players as well. Right. Chris, how many guys, Chris, do you have where you say, I think I know what I'm going to get from that guy each game? Um, about four or five. You know, which again, we're playing nine, uh, sometimes 10. So that that's where we got to get better. Other questions? Kent and then Michael. Hey, I'm not getting into all the uh, he said, she said stuff. Uh, my worry is the uh, the 14 scholarship players, the 18 total players we have on our roster, uh, worrying about the next game. And uh, all that other stuff will sort itself out over time. I'm only concerned about, you know, our team and uh, getting them ready to play and them knowing that they're my only focus. Michael. Chris, what's the competition like now that you've got Gabe back, at least amongst the bigs, you know, with Rose, Sydney, Gabe? And obviously Malik, what's that competition becoming like in practice? Well, I think you have Malik, who has certainly um, been playing better and better as the games have wore on. He's second in the ACC in rebounding. Uh, I thought his offensive effort was really good on Saturday at NC State. And then you, uh, then you have three guys who, in my opinion, are um, all about the same. Certainly different type of players, but what we can expect, again, goes back to like, uh, who are you going to be out there on the floor from one day to the next, one game to the next, uh, one substitution from the next, has to become more consistent. Um, there's not a whole lot of separation with those three. You know, it just sort of, what do you think will be the best matchup what do you think that player that goes out on the floor at center position will bring to the table and and, and help us and again a few young guys you know you got Sidney Curry who's you know just uh a few games into his division one career you got Gabe who didn't play a whole lot last year who's um was hurt at the beginning of the preseason and uh is still figuring it out and then you got Rose who's eight games into his college career. So um, there's not a whole lot of separation from one day to the next. And uh, a few guys have made some big time leaps and they need to continue to make even greater steps as we can sort of solidify who our backup center is over time. Coach, thank you for joining us. Media, thank you for being on the call. Have Thanks, guys.